Comfort is not a word one might associate with the corset, and yet this archaic undergarment still dominates high fashion, street style, and even the cover of Vogue. So just how did the corset make its way from the waist of Marie Antoinette to the modern cultural zeitgeist? I'm Hamish Bowles, Vogue's global editor-at-large, and I'm here to tell you everything you need to know about the corset. Legend has it that the introduction, or rather mandate, of corset wearing came from Catherine de Medici, who allegedly brought metal corsets from Italy to France in the 16th century. Though costume historians believe that corsets were initially used to support the spine, the 17th century found women, and some men, of a certain class and distinction wearing them for, well, fashion. Soon, they became the status quo, and by the 1830s, the hourglass silhouette for fashionable women, and some dandified men, was all the rage in Europe and America. Way before the era of the Kardashian waist trainer, these ladies were in search of an 18-inch waist. With the help of whalebone stays, tight lacing and padding, it was a one-size-fits-all solution to creating the perfect figure. Of course, the corset had its critics. By the late 19th century, dress reformers argued that corsets were not only morally evil, but dangerous to women's health. Some doctors blame the corset's tightness for causing damage to internal organs. No wonder that most Victorian women were not smiling in their portraits. But pain wasn't enough to stop the corset on its course. The first decade of the 20th century championed the S-curve, or health corset, which was lightly boned, unboned, or stiffened with cord. In other words, slightly less painful. It forced the torso forward while jutting the woman's hips and bottom out behind her. And even more shapes came into the fold in the teens and the 1920s. Paris's king of fashion, Paul Poiret, for example, rejected the era's S-curve. The invention of elastic, too, allowed for a new tubular corset, which made more sense for the loose, flowing dresses of the flapper era. But as with every trend, the comfortable kick of the 1920s proved temporary, as the allure of the classic hourglass silhouette became irresistible for designers in the pre- and post-World War II era. Mambouche's late 1930s wasp waist design immortalized in photographer Horst P. Horst's iconic image, and Christian Dior's structured new look of 1947 once again constricted and reshaped women's bodies and redefined the fashion silhouette. The corset took a backseat to modern waist-shifting practices like diet, exercise and surgery in the 60s and 70s. It was from here that the use of the corset in fashion went from practical to purely aesthetic. Vivian Westwood's use of the corset was evocative of punk. Here, the corset was used to empower women rather than constrain them. And Dolce & Gabbana's debut corset dress in 1989 updated the undergarment for a modern take on femininity, which went on to define the brand for years to come. Jean-Paul Gaultier also took up the corset in his early 80s collections, but his most famous iteration came in 1990, designed for Madonna's Blonde Ambition Tour. The piece ignored soft, womanly curves and instead opted for jagged, spiky lines. This was a clear departure and defiance from the patriarchal demands of its forebears and a nod to the BDSM community and to Jean-Paul's grandmother and childhood teddy bear. Soon, every designer from Christian Lacroix, Thierry Mugler and Alexander McQueen wanted a corset of their own and they knew just the man for the job. Mr. Pearl, the king of corsetry. It was Mr. Pearl, after all, whose controversial corset got Kim Kardashian in her head-turning Thierry Mugler gown at the 2019 Met Gala. Today, the corset is a piece that refuses to remain backstage. Well, under the garment. Kendall Jenner, Dua Lipa and Bella Hadid have embraced their own as streetwear. Pairing them with baggy jeans and trainers and even over t-shirts, they've taken this 17th century relic and turned it into a casual gem. The avant-garde interpretations of Tomo Koizumi, Christopher John Rogers and Puppets and Puppets 2 showcase that the corset of 2021 is less a stricture and more a playful addition to the modern wardrobe. While the ladies of Bridgerton and the tight-lacing trends that followed on TikTok expand the humorous take on the garment. So, where will the corset go next? Will it regress into an uncomfortably binding piece of history, once meant to similarly shape all wearers? Or will it continue to evolve? Spanx and Skims have replaced the need for corsetry's painful practices and favor diversified sizing. 
If there's anything we've learned throughout the course of its history, it's that there's no need to be so uptight 